Let's check in with Mark Larkin. Debrief the weekend. Larko, we are well and truly on the road to Bathurst. We certainly are, Jess. And, you know, sometimes the best way... Well, you know, I like to explain it in pictures if I can. Just before I get there, as part of that road to Bathurst, I just want to reflect on this guy. Now, I'm not Anton Di Pasquale's fanboy, or maybe I am a little bit, but I said earlier in the day about the turning point for this kid. And to watch today, particularly in the earlier race today, where he finished fifth, and I thought the way he managed himself, because sometimes in this game we talk about losing a battle to win the war. He managed his way to fifth position. He got overtaken but didn't throw it away, gathered some points. And then what he did with Will Brown at the end of the day, we talked about aero, didn't we? And he said it. He said the dirty air he knew was going to corrupt the front of Will Brown's car and his tyres. And Anton cleverly managed that to win the race. That is the sign of a fast, young, maturing driver. And to every parent out there that has a young kid coming up through the ranks, just take note. That's the level of learning that needs to happen. There ain't no shortcut. Now, talking about shortcuts, here we are, road to Bathurst, because we literally are on it. So I've tried to set this out on a bit of a timeline. Here we are. So we've just bowled over this weekend. And to give you some concept to the variety of racing that we've got coming up. So we've just had three 125 soft tyres, night and day racing. Next weekend, three 125 Ks, soft and hard tyres then, mixing it up, and night racing. Then we go three by 125 Ks with soft tyres this time, daytime racing. That'll be hardcore, that one. And then the fourth week in a row, two 250 K races, super soft tyres and hard tyres, we haven't done that before and fuel and night and day, so talk about mix it up and then we go preparation for Bathurst in here, one week off, now remember the Queensland teams are not going to be able to come back across the border a bit like myself, so they are going to have to prep on the road. Now, that's going to be really interesting because there's a lot of work. You've got to pull the cars apart and there's about, what, 1,200 points still up for grabs all the way through here. And you're only talking hundreds of points between some of these top players. So the game is well and truly on. What a fantastic journey we're on. And, you know, we often say with football, they play every week so we know where they're playing. Well, folks... We've never done this, so if you've ever wanted to latch onto our championship, follow the form guide, get engaged, bang, 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 now is the time to do it. Now, a couple of the favourite things I'm looking forward to are this when we go to Bathurst. A couple of old buddies, eh? Russell Lingle and Greg Murphy. Now, Murph, we already know, is the oldest bloke to ever drive a race car in New Zealand. Russell Lingle. Now, I've dug into my old photo album. I found these pics I had here. Here's Russell. Look. This is his first go-kart win. He's, well, he's, he's seven years of age here. Pucker Punyal, West under fives, B, division, reserves, mixed. He was a champion at an early age. And then if we keep going, I've got another little pick I found. A couple of years older there. There you go. Uh, Russell in 1958, age nine. I raced him in Formula Ford. He was about, I reckon he was about 48 years, in 90, 48 years old in 1989 when I raced him. And then finally, you know you do the driver practice with a little seat, the dicky seat with the co-driver. Well, we've got a secret image of Russell practising. Look at this. They're having a little play with his dicky seat. Just getting it in and out there in preparation for Bathurst. Cannot wait for that. <laughs> Oh, you're mean, Larko. That's mean. You seen no, that? No, Russell <laughs> loves it. I'm glad you said it. I'm genuinely it. looking forward to it. I just I hope we, can, I hope we can get them together on the track somewhere, somehow. Now, where are your pom poms? You're not just the biggest fanboy for Anton Di Pasquale. You are his number one cheerleader. I, I am, but no, look, you know, it isn't great. We love watching good young talent come up now. through our game, through all the junior series, and learn. And it's just, it's marvellous to watch. And uh, MS is the same, Scafie's the same, I know that. So, but just, hey, look, it's been fun this weekend up here at Dick Johnson Racing. I've enjoyed it. It's been great having the whiteboard back. That's been a lot of fun. I've just got to get back to my, I just love the crompo thing. It's, um, he's just had a stellar weekend. What a comeback. As I said, I reckon the new model's better than the old model. It's been it's great to have him back. I hope you get that picture framed. That's a good Christmas present for Crompo, don't you think? It is. It's the new and improved version, <laughs> isn't it? For sure. <laughs> hey, Lucko, we've made all these comparisons this weekend about the Scott McLaughlin factor that we've all been salivating over the last few years. But is this a weekend for Anton to display McLaughlin-like talents? Well, 100% it is, Mark. And you know as well as I do, it's not as easy. A lot of people say, why didn't he just jump in Scott's car and go as fast as he could? And I think some of that is, yes, car set up, but you've said it all weekend, mate. He's looking like he's driving the car like Scott. But I think some of it's trust, isn't it, mate? So, you know, Anton, I, I know I've said it for years, the guy's got a lot of self-belief, a lot of self-confidence, which you need. So when you have an engineer come along and say, no, 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 I need you to do it this way, that's a hard deal to broker. 
but that's the point, isn't it? I reckon they've brokered that deal. A lot of trust in the car, a lot of faith in the engineer. The engineer then has more faith in the driver, and the whole thing escalates. And for me, mate, the big ticket items weren't just the speed, it was the intelligence that he's showing. You know, I just thought that was magnificent at the end. He let Will Brown come to him, knowing that Will Brown was consuming his tyres to do that. Anton knew that. And he said when he gets to my dirty air, he's going nowhere. He, he let him get right on his back bumper, didn't bother him. And then away he went. That is clever race driving. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And the confidence it'll take from this weekend, Larko, absolutely immeasurable. Where are you next weekend? Are you back at DJR or have you nicked the keys to someone else's workshop? Well, we're that work in progress, mate. So, um, and, do, right. and don't worry, um, it, for those that are asking, thank you for your interest. I'm double vaxxed. I'm an, I was an early adopter. I was double vaxxed a long time ago. Just my circumstance mean I can't get down there, but I'm going to get down there for Bathurst um, and let's see what happens over the coming weeks. It's work in Wh progress. Why don't you do it from your second home at the Bow Desert RSL? <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean second home, mate? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Larko. We miss you down here in Sydney, but we'll catch up with you next weekend. Miss you too, guys, too.